Hey guys, uh, I'm going to review the pay-per-view of the year in pro wrestling, mixed martial arts, boxing, kickboxing, dog shows, horse racing, movies, television. Wait, it's, it's the best pay or free thing on television this year. UFC 136. I was in Houston, Texas at the Toyota Center and uh, yeah, it was uh, fucking excellent. Um, the opener of the Spike TV card was Anthony Showtime Pettis versus Jeremy Stevens. Um, Pettis was impressive and he had like good wrestling and got good positions and stuff, but it wasn't a, sh nor a regular Showtime type of fight, so I don't know, it was good. Pettis picked up the win. All right, then we got a match between two grapplers, sorts, especially uh, one of them. Damian Maya versus George Santiago, and this was a. Uh, it's actually really boring. Maya clearly had better grappling than wrestling, so he just kind of took it down. But Santiago's jujitsu was too good to get finished, so he just held it off, and uh, Maya didn't really go for the finish, and uh, so we weren't off to a good start exactly. Alright, then we got to the main card. That's when stuff got good. Uh, we had in the opener the young assassin Melvin Gallard versus Joe Lozon. And Lozon shocked the world and he hit when um, Gillard, who would have been the next number one contender, the next guy in line if he won, went for a punch with all his momentum and as he was coming in, a good Ooh, I, I think it was a straight, maybe a jab, maybe a stiff jab from Lozon sent him down, and you know, once you're on the ground with Lozon, you might as well, you might as well tap out before he even finishes you. You get a palm to palm choke, just deep, and man, uh, watch out for Joe Lozon. I believe Gilbert Melendez will get the next shot, but you know. Lozon is definitely going to get a, a higher tier fight, if not a title shot. So watch out for that. He was the, the something like four to one underdog, but he's been the underdog before, and he came through. And that's the type of fighter I like. I'm, I'm, I like everything about that type of fighter. It's more technique than it is brute force or strength. Yeah, it's good. All right, um, then we got. I believe it was. Nam Fan versus Leonard Bad Boy Garcia in this match. This fight was insane. It was just basically it was two guys hitting each other in the face very hard and not a lot of defense. It wasn't like the last fight. It wasn't much swinging. Uh, Garcia actually used some technique and put together combos. He put together like a leg kick and like a one-two and you know. He was actually doing pretty good. He lost the first round clearly, but then he probably won the second one, and then I barely lost. He lost the last one when he just he was gassed. Uh, Leonard Garcia coming into the third round was completely gassed, and he still had a good performance and almost stole it at the end. Um, yeah, maybe he won the last and lost the second. Anyway, this fight was crazy. Uh, a lot of people would say fight of the night, which you know. I normally wouldn't argue with, but there is literally, there is legitimately three fights on this card that could be fight of the night. So, oh, oh by the way, Joe Lozon picked up submission of the night. All right, then we had, hmm, I'm trying to remember here. I, uh, Jesus, we had Brian Stan versus Chael Sonnen. Uh, Sonnen was dominant. He got hit with, I think, one hard body shot, but he took it down. He got on the ground, and I was telling everyone, like, this guy's like anti jiu jitsu. Well, he finished it off with a side choke, so maybe he's catch. Either way, uh, Sonnen's the real deal. And afterward, when Joe Rogan goes to interview him, instead of talking about the fight, he talks about Anderson Silva. More specifically, he calls him out and he says, you absolutely suck, and he's saying that he's not real champion, and he said, how about we do the rematch everyone wants to see on Super Bowl weekend, uh, which will be in Vegas, their show, 
uh, he says, "Why don't we? Why don't we have one more match? One more match. I win. You leave the middleweight division. You win. I leave the UFC." It was like a wrestling promo. That's like pretty much all he said. And, I don't know. Silva seemed interested, and he definitely understood him. His English is getting a lot better. Uh, yeah, Sonnen versus Silva is definitely going to happen. <laughs> Joe Rogan was sold on it. He was marking out harder than I was. And, wow. Uh, CM Punk, one man gives you a run for your money, and that's Chael Sonnen. That dude is great on the mic. Even when he's like, being a complete douche, he's hilarious. And, yeah, that's going to be... I mean, I'm... <laughs> Ch Chael, uh... <laughs> I thought Silva would definitely take that rematch from him. Questions now because Chael seems fired up, and the way he took out Brian Stan was pretty easy for him. And wow, he took pretty much no damage. He took a, a painful body shot, but nothing that hurt him. All right, then we got the featherweight championship of the world. Kenny Kenflo Florian challenging the champ Jose Aldo Jr. Um. At first, Jose landed uh, a couple of pretty hard strikes, and then Florian pushed him up against the cage and coutured him basically. But the less instead of the dirty boxing, it was just kind of holding him. A couple of leg kicks. They traded a little bit of leg kicks, and uh, the fight wasn't great. And it just kind of dragged out a little bit, but it was all right. But you definitely see that they both should have been more aggressive. And uh, Aldo did get more aggressive, and I don't know. The fight was okay. If he would have done more leg kicks, I think Kenny would have collapsed. Um, yeah, Meldo successful, successfully retains. It was a pretty big unanimous decision. I think it might have been 49 46 or something. It was something like that. It was pretty uh, dominant, but it wasn't in a way. I think he kind of lost a couple rounds, but whatever. Okay, uh, then we had our main event of the evening. For the UFC lightweight championship of the world, the match everyone wanted to see, the, the third part, the final installment of the trilogy, and in my opinion, the best. Gray Maynard versus Frank, the answer, Edgar. These two, as soon as it started out, take the first round from the second fight where Maynard just got rocked and he was on Queer Street. He was just fucked up. And multiply that by like three times. He got Maynard was hitting him like the hardest I've ever seen Maynard hit anyone, and bloody him. And I thought it was over. I was like, oh man, my boy's gonna lose. And then somehow he recovers and he even throws a couple punches. And I just messed up my hair. And wow. Uh, Frank Edgar's the easily got the most heart of any fighter in the world. Uh, I haven't seen heart like that since Mickey Ward. Honestly, no one else has that heart. Not Pacquiao, not Mayweather, not Silva, not GSP. Frank Edgar, uh, he has a monopoly on heart, man. That, that dude, oof. If he gave someone a heart, if he gave someone his heart, for whatever reason, uh, that person would probably live to like 300. He's just a freaking Highlander. You can't kill him unless you cut off his head. And even then, he'd probably regenerate a new one. <laughs> uh, yeah, the second round, just Frank was putting on more of a clink. He was still getting hit hard, but then he was, you know, quick into the pace. Went a little longer, I believe it was the fourth round. And Edgar was going for the takedown, which he was being stuffed all night. And then instead of keep going for the takedown, when Maynard kind of had his head down, boom, nails him, and then just hit him with uppercuts. The hardest punches I've ever seen Edgar throw. Apparently, he's got real power now, which is scary. Hits him with, I believe it was a right, just, ooh, like a cross. And he was hitting him with straights and uppercuts and just bloodying him. And then he TKO'd him on the ground. Uh, it was one of those TKOs where he was like sleeping basically after it and wow Frank Edgar is still your UFC lightweight champion of the world and in my opinion 
it's him and Anderson Silva and maybe John Jones. He's the only reason why Silva is uh, higher ranked is because he's been kicking ass for longer. If Edgar had been <laughs> kicking ass for the same amount of time, I'm sure he'd be ranked higher than Silva. So uh, there you have it. This was, if you haven't seen this for whatever reason, you better have a good fucking reason. A real good reason. Like, I was stranded in a cave and I didn't get home in time. There was a rock cave in and I, something like that. A bear mauled me and I couldn't walk. Something good. Um, yeah. This was definitely the pay per view of the year. Uh, WWE doesn't compare, New Japan, none of it. Mm -mm, not even close. Mayweather versus Ortiz, please. Uh, that shit wasn't worth 10 bucks. This was worth what it cost. And, um, yeah, I don't regret it at all. The next pay per view will be UFC 137, St. Pierre versus Condit, and BJ Penn versus my favorite fighter. Nick Diaz. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for that car too. And then I'm going to probably give the pay per views a break because, um, you know, not much of that. Uh, okay. Some great stuff all around. Chael Sonnen versus Anderson Silva will happen. Will it happen at Super Bowl weekend? Who knows? And Chael's definitely healthy enough. Anderson, oh, he has to be by then. Um, if you're not excited to be a mixed martial arts fan, I'm even a pro wrestling fan. If a pro wrestling fan watches this and they didn't enjoy it, then they don't enjoy anything entertaining and they must watch TNA and there's no hope for them. You know, they're brain dead anyway. So, <laughs> Alright, UFC 136, best pay-per-view of the year. Adios amigos. Because it was in Texas. Later. I don't know what the fuck that was supposed to mean, but...